We want to shift gears now and talk about how to shrink the U.S. deficit. We keep hearing we have to cut spending or increase taxes or some combination of both. But my next guest says the deficit can also be solved by simply increasing U.S. growth over the next 20 years by a single percentage point. Getting there, though, it won't be easy. For more, let's bring in Darren Asamoglu. He's a professor at MIT. He won the highly coveted John Bates Clark Medal in 2005. He's also the author of Why Nations Fail. And actually, I have to say, Darren, you were brought to my attention today by an opinion piece that Simon Johnson wrote for Bloomberg View, where he cited your comments that if you increase GDP by a percentage point on average for the next decade, you would essentially solve the deficit crisis. Of course, easier said than done. Uh, how, do you, how do you get there? What do you think is sort of the single most important uh, element that we need in order to get there? Well, I think, I mean, the first thing I want to say is that I think there are many reasons for caring about growth. I think economic growth is a, a major engine for job creation. Uh, but besides that, you know, the debate in Washington has focused so much on debt reduction and taxes and uh, cutting entitlements. Uh, but actually, uh, increasing growth will be also an effective way of uh, reducing the deficit because increasing economic growth will also naturally increase government tax revenues. So uh, I think we shouldn't take our eye off uh, the policies that are going to be good for economic growth. And I think those policies at the, at the end always come down to innovation. The well, U.S. is a very innovative economy, and, and I think we have to make sure that that innovative potential is used. And sort of on the flip side of that, the, the spending cuts uh, that are, are talked about in Washington and planned in Washington, most economists say will be detrimental to growth. I think there is definitely uh, a danger of that. There, I think there are two aspects of that. One is that cutting spending in the middle of a uh, very uh, anemic uh, recovery could actually damage the recovery. But also importantly, I think many of the areas that are being discussed could actually damage the research infrastructure of the U.S. economy. And that research infrastructure is very important for economic growth. So you have actually, in a recent blog posting, you have three different measures that you think will help foster innovation. First of all, uh, encouraging skilled foreign workers to work and settle in the U.S., foster commercialization of innovation, and finally focus on green technology, which is something uh, that the president has at least spoken about. Um, I don't know if he's done as much as he's spoken about, but let's take these one by one. Um, the first has been very political, to encourage skilled foreign workers to work work and settle in the United States. There's been a, a lot of uh, sort of pushback against that in recent years. Well, I think uh, it's, a, it's a hotly debated topic. And, and I think uh, there is a kind of a, a knee-jerk reaction that people have to it, because they think of all kinds of immigration as uh, stealing jobs from Americans. And it is true that when immigrants come, the jobs that the immigrants do will not be performed by Americans. But when we're thinking of people who are coming uh, with very specialized skills and knowledge, and they're bringing that to the U.S. economy, that also contributes to job creation. And it, it really acts as a fuel to the innovation engine. So let's talk about commercialization of innovation. What exactly do you mean by that? The, the main issue here is uh, about the innovative ideas that are developed and technologies that are developed in uh, universities and sometimes also in the research labs of uh, large companies. It is one thing to kind of come up with good ideas and good technologies, but that doesn't n naturally translate into, uh, into products that companies produce and then use those for hiring labor and contributing to economic growth. In general, it's a difficult process for people who are, uh, who are the researchers and the innovators to actually uh, take the next step and commercialize these and apply them in business. And, so from, uh, the, from a policy the, perspective, how do, you, how do you make that happen? Uh, well, I think one aspect of that has been the legislation that the U.S. Uh, government passed in the 1980s, the Bayh-Dole Act, which uh, enabled people to, to, to do this more easily. But I think additional subsidies for commercialization of research or, and for applied research would actually be part of the, part of the solution. I think many of the 
uh, key technologies that are being used in biomedical, biotechnology area, in smartphones, in software today have their origins in uh, in research that, are, that that's been done by federally funded research uh, in universities or in other research labs. And I think uh, if the if these technologies go to the market faster, the U.S. consumers and the U.S. workforce will be the main beneficiaries of that. Darren, unfortunately, we squeezed the last one. Only have about 20 seconds left for the for fostering green technology growth as well. Do you think the best way to do that is also through subsidies? I think subsidies have to play a major major role, but I think there's a much more powerful tool we have at our disposal, and that's a carbon tax. You know, we, we don't like taxes in general, and I think uh, uh, taxing anything that's a key input to business is not a good idea in general. But in this case, ca taxing carbon will actually be a major contributor to the market for green technologies. And I think there's a danger that U.S. is actually lagging behind here, European and even uh, developing nations, because we haven't been investing in green technology. And there is a real possibility that green technology, just like software or satellite, will be a platform for a lot of new innovations and job-creating technologies of the future. Darren Asimoglu, thank you so much, uh, Professor of Economics at MIT, for giving us some growth suggestions for the U.S. economy.